I'll get your opinion on this in a second, Clay. I was a little disappointed mm. with the Jets and the way they went about this. Um, asking a veteran player, a leader, and a guy who's performed really well when on the field to take a 50% pay cut reportedly when you're not in need of cap space and it's late May, early June, it felt like they just kind of boxed him into a corner. As you mentioned and referenced really well, he wasn't going to test the open market with the rosters filling, um, with people still struggling to sign their rookies in a year where the cap has gone down after the pandemic. I thought it was a maybe a bad PR move, I think, these kind of moves resonate with agents who probably don't like to see it. May it affect the locker room that sends the message that even if you perform on the field, if you get to year three in your deal, we're going to restructure because that's how we do business. So I was a little wary of the Jets um, making that move. Obviously, Douglas, it was a shrewd move. They've saved some cap. The Jets, after the rookie class, will now have around $23 million. But did you share those thoughts, Clay, or that really wasn't an issue for you? Um, it wasn't too big of an issue. When I saw you put it out on Twitter, I kind of thought about it a little bit. I'm like, yeah, maybe it's not the best timing, but I mean, this is what teams do. I mean, it's it's a business, and I think these players know that. Yeah, it's not it's not going to go exactly how you want it to. Unfortunately, uh, I mean, the players are doing the work on the field. They're the they're the ones in the headlines, but it's still a business run by the people not <laughs> in pads. Uh, so I didn't think it was too big of a problem. Um, it just I thought 50% what I think the extent of how much they wanted him to take off was a little bit, uh, a little bit too much. But like, say they wanted him to take like a 30%. I felt like that was like, a, that made a little more. 